Hi, everybody. Tony Marcolini. It may interest you to know I'm joined here with my co-host Seamus McDonough and a very special guest today, uh, stand-up comedian and actor Robert Apple or Rob Apple. I guess I'm using your formal name. It sounds like you're one of your parents, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Rob, For a second, I thought I was graduating again. <laughs> <laughs> so Rob Apple, Rob, let me tell you why Seamus and I really wanted to have you here um, because we're okay. very interested in creative, the creative process, creating. Uh, and we have a lot of writers, screenwriters, authors, uh, producers, people who create film, whatever you create, we want to talk to you about it. We're really interested in that. And I think creating comedy has to truly be one of the hardest things to do. Uh, and that's why we really, we wanted to have some stand-up comedians on. We're going to have a little arc of episodes where we bring on some stand-up comedians to talk about it. So I'm going to lead with the toughest question of all. How do you create your comedy? Ooh, that's a tough one. It's because uh, because every single time you come up with something to bring onto the stage, there's always the possibility that you're going to run into somebody else who has done something too similar, and then it might mess with you. It might it might uh, if you go up and you perform it, you, you could very well be mistaken for somebody who's who's stealing material. Um, it's a, so it's a really tough one. So as far as I'm concerned with, with my act, I try to base it on my life experiences. So a lot of my act is about me. It's, uh, it's, it's about what I've been through as far as jobs, uh, past love interests, and experiences and I that, I've, that I've had. As, as, a, as a matrimonial lawyer for a lot of years, I know there's a lot of comedy in relationships. Oh my goodness, is there ever... <laughs> And, and that's the, probably the best way to be original uh, is, to, is to, to talk about those, those painful experiences and you, try to, you just try to put a funny twist on them. You know, you take even some of the, even some of the enjoyable experiences that a lot of folks can relate to. And it's just, it's just a matter of putting it all together and, and um, presenting it for the stage and then going and performing it. I always say that I think people who've led uh, dysfunctional lives probably are the funniest people. Because there's so much comedy. absolutely there's so much comedy and dysfunction. <sighs> there really is, and 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 the pain that comes from that and those problems are the things that uh, real people really tap into. A lot of comedians will will tap into it. Audience members relate to it pretty well, and it, it's it's amazing. I, I love dark humor, so I love the deepest, darkest, sickest humor. Things that you almost feel guilty laughing at. That's the type of stuff that I, that I enjoy watching. <laughs> and and, and I, I can't perform it so well, unfortunately. And unfortunately for me in this case, but fortunately for me in, in, in real life, I grew up in a stable household with good parents that provided a lot for me. They worked very hard. They got along pretty well for the most part uh, growing up. So I didn't, I didn't really have a lot of, of painful things to deal with until – you know, a little bit later in life when I lost my father, but you know, even, even something like that, how do you, how do you make, how do you make that fun? You know, it's, 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 uh, it is very challenging. It, it really is. So tell me what drew you to comedy. How'd you get your start? Well, I was, it was actually, uh, done on a dare. Um, <laughs> the person who I was dating at the time, she, um, she had seen a comedy show with a bunch of her friends and she had said, you know, you're really funny. You should, you should try doing it. And uh, it's something I've always wanted to do. I've watched Comedy Central and I've been watching um, uh, some of my favorite comedians like Robin Williams. Uh, Richard Jenny was one who I was a, a big fan of. And uh, Norm MacDonald, God rest his soul, just passed away. Uh, I grew up watching those guys and idolizing what they did. And I was always so, so excited to watch it and, and be a part of not, not be a part of it, but, you know, enjoy it from a spectator's point of view. And I never really thought to go up and try it. And then I was actually pushed by this girl I was dating to, to go up and give it a shot. And sure enough, I got all my friends, all my neighbors out to the very first show I did. And, and, and to be honest with you, it's very much, I tell people this all the time, it's very much like getting addicted to a drug. I mean, it hits you hard right away. Some people, not so much, but for me, I was immediately hooked. The first time I got even a chuckle on stage, I was hooked. And I knew that it was what I wanted to do. Mentors? Did you have a mentor at the time? Somebody who kind of showed you the ropes or? Yes, absolutely. Uh, my friend Doug Karf. Uh, he's a, he's, he's a, a comedian who was doing it about 12 years when I started. And I started uh, about 16 years ago. 
So he's been doing it for a long time now as well. He's, he's somebody who I consider a veteran. Um, he's definitely a good road comic. He can, he goes on the road, uh, just about every weekend and he, he's performed. We, we both have performed, but I've, um, but I've seen him do it in to a much greater level than I, but we've performed in some of the most difficult situations that you could possibly come up with. And, uh, yeah, he took, he took me out on the road with him and he introduced me to, to people that book shows and, and I got opportunities that way. So tell us some of the most difficult times. Uh, let's see the most difficult times. Okay. So I was maybe doing it six months and he <laughs> brought me out to a show that was, uh, it was a show that was just police chiefs and very high up people in police departments all over the state of New Jersey. It was a black tie event, but nobody told us. So everybody there was, was dressed to the nines in great suits. Some of them even, even in tuxedos. And uh, I was going to go up and do about five minutes in front of him and, and, and open up. And then he was going to take over and do about an hour. So I knew that the hour was going to be challenging. But for one thing, th these were no nonsense guys. They didn't, they didn't want this. Like the, we were going into a situation where we, they did not want us. And in fact, the organizer who hired us, the way he introduced the comedy part of the evening was he had said, okay, we're going to try this comedy thing again. I hope this guy doesn't suck. Please welcome Ron Apple. <laughs> so that was a very, that, that was a tricky start. Now, like I said, I hadn't, I've been doing it about six months. Now, everybody was dressed in these beautiful suits and they look great. I walked in in khakis and a blue button down. I swear I stood out like a sore thumb, not only by just the color of my shirt, but how underdressed I was. I think I might have even had stains on the pants. Oh. It was, yeah, it was, it was very uncomfortable in that situation. Getting that superb introduction really just made things wonderful. So I went up with beads of sweat all over and they saw <laughs> right through me. That was probably one of the most difficult things, but, uh, you know, as, as you progress in it, you, you start to get involved in different things. And I've, I've, I've also got involved with booking my own shows and producing them in bars and restaurants, uh, things like that. And, um, got involved with uh, a venue that we wound up doing shows inside their bar and nobody knew that there was going to be a show. Like we had a flyer up, but come show night, the, the room is packed with people sitting at the bar, sitting at the tables. They had no clue that we were going to do a show. And so all of a sudden I just go up there and I just start performing to people that one, don't expect me to be there. And two, didn't want me on <laughs> up there talking to them. So th that's that's getting up in front of a situation like that can be really tricky. <laughs> What's the traveling like? I, I mean, I would think that would be the hardest thing. Going, I mean, most people they go to work, they go to the same place. Uh, but your 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 job is is where whatever comedy club you're performing in that that night. What that's what's that like? I love the travel. I love it. It's, it's, I, I could go on the road and the further, the better, as far as I'm concerned, if I can get away from where I am, step out of my comfort zone, go in front of people that may never have ever heard of me and may never hear of me unless I perform there that night. To me, that's the best, especially if you go on the road with other comics you, in the car, you may have a five, six, seven hour ride and you're, you're telling war stories. You're one up in each other with the, with the most awful things you could say just about anything. You just, you're just trying to say the most screwed up thing. And, uh, it's <laughs> going on the road is the most fun. It's, it really is. Cause you just, you, you, you connect with these comedians and it grows your relationship with them. And then even if it is a nightmare scenario, kind of like one of the ones that I had mentioned, that's a story that you, you just went through that together. So you tell other comedians about it. It bonds you with the comedians that you were on with that night. And it could be 10 years. We're still talking about, you know, we're still, still talking about the show in Clearfield, Pennsylvania, where uh, where they didn't know we were coming, and you know the, the whole the the whole town just wanted us gone. You know, or, or or you know going down to Virginia and doing a show, and then running into people at Sheets at four o'clock in the morning, and they recognized us from the show. Like we we share those stories. There there really is a camaraderie between comedians, especially when you go through um, gigs on the road and and different type of situations together. 
That, that's you know what that surprises me. I think I, I think that if I was a comedian, that's the part I'd like the least. Uh, I mean, I get the camaraderie, but I think the traveling. Because uh, in all my years of practicing law, that's the part I like the least, like having to just travel to all different courthouses, like carrying your files and driving different places. I, I probably, I liked being in court a lot, but I liked the traveling the least. I can understand that driving and traveling around and, and, and the, the build up to it can be can be really taxing on you physically and some some folks embrace it some folks it's it's very difficult for them so I can understand why that that's why that would be something that you don't like um, I, I guess I'm just a masochist <laughs> I you know even even as a comedian I I I am not afraid to get up in, in, in a difficult situation and do something really hard. Like even if you go into a comedy club and maybe there's five people in the audience, that's very intimidating when you're just performing to five people or if there's maybe 10 people and they're scattered all over the room, that could be, that could be very difficult. You know, um, what about I, had to, I had to do, sorry. What about heckler? I'm sorry. Thankfully, my act is it, it's um, it's pretty streamlined in the sense that I, I just kind of go from point to point to point to point to point. I don't often deviate from it unless it's something that really out of the ordinary happens. Like I've had I've had people spill drinks in front of me or um, bachelorette parties, believe it or not. They're very, you know, as a as a as a guy, you, you think that's exciting. But it can actually be very difficult because they're hooting, they're hollering, they're talking with each other, they're, they're carrying on conversations, they're laughing at things that aren't relevant to the show. And it can be very difficult to overpower that. Thankfully, my act, I just, I can, if you get into a situation like that, at least with me, I can, I can plow right through it. Just plow right on through and just do my act over the noise, over the background voices and all that. And that's... Um, you know, that's that's how I personally deal with it. Other, I, I can't speak for everybody else. Everybody's got a different approach, but uh, some people will, will go right at them. Some people will engage with them. You know, try to have a conversation with somebody who's trying to tear them down in front of the rest of the room. Um, it, everybody deals with it differently. I I have found that if I try to deviate and try to go off the cuff, I I run the risk of getting myself in trouble. I don't want to say anything. I, I especially don't want to like let emotions get to me. So just the way that I can deal with that is I just motor through. I just get right through it, get to my set, finish my time, thank the audience, and, you know, wrap up. Now, first time on stage, you had a joke, loved it. When you performed it, when you thought, when you created it, you said, this is going to tear the place down. You went up there, you said it, and crickets. <laughs> How do you, what it's happens? Been, <laughs> it's been happening for years. Well, th there's... Uh, a certain level of, uh, of preparation that goes into it. So you can do open mics and you can do, you can do um, non-pressure situations as a comedian. And typically it's, it's the open mic scene. And there's plenty of open mics around, especially in the tri-state area. Um, like if you wanted to get up tonight, there's some place for you to perform tonight, Friday night. You can, you can get up there. Uh, it's just a matter of where to, where to look and you might have to drive. That, that might be the problem. But, uh, you know, you, you really want to work those bits out prior to putting them in front of a crowd but i've I, i've had plenty of bits that i know are tried and true and they work 99 percent of the time but there's always that one percent there's always that time where you get up there and you, you you do a joke that normally hits and it just falls flat and now you just you just have to respond sometimes you can you can play to the non-reaction you know, you can say something like, wow, that didn't go ahead. Or, you know, somebody, somebody will say something like, oh, wow, that went over like a fart in church. Yeah. <laughs> There's lots of little ways you can, you can deal with it. And, you know, responding to the non-response, I think, is one of the most effective ways. And uh, that's, that's something that I'm not afraid to do. Well, that was Johnny Carson, right, Seamus? Remember Johnny Carson? He would, you know, he had a dud of a joke and he would either start tap dancing or he would just look over at you know, Ed or Doc and, and the back, the backup plan. I, I completely relate, Rob. I, my thing, I've never done stand-up comedy. I would love to try it. And I'm sure it's so impossible for me to do, but I do some acting. And my first part was in a, an off-Broadway play in New York. It got up by total accident. And, um, I fell in love. I got the bug, I got the hook. And, uh, and, uh, I, I was, that's what, that's what I wanted to do. Seamus, uh, here's the thing I tell everybody, try it, 
once, at least mm. once. Just wow. get up there and try it someplace. Mm. Just, you know, put together a couple of minutes, some, you know, a, you know, a, a funny story that uh, maybe you've, you've told a hundred times at a, at a, mm. at a hundred different parties. Mm. Um, maybe something that you said to contractors working in your house that usually gets mm. a chuckle or a response, mm. put it together get up there, give it a try. Tony, same thing. Get, get up there and give it a try. You would probably be very comfortable with it given all your courtroom experience. That's, uh, that's something I, I, I tell to everybody because here's the thing. At the end of the day, if you go up and you try it and you, and you fall flat on your face and you hate the feeling, it scares the daylights out of you and you never want to do it again, at least you can't say that you didn't try it. You know, you, can, you, can, you have that. I tried it wasn't necessarily for me but i tried it and that was that was a lot of how i got started and i know that's a lot that's that's very consistent with a lot of people how they started well i just i i give so much credit to comedians because i think to stand up in front of a crowd uh, and have it be a different crowd like sometimes you get a good crowd with a good sense of humor and but sometimes you get people who are just quiet and they're not enjoying your kind of humor and to plow, oh, you know, and to plow through, uh, you know, and just keep doing your thing, keep telling your jokes uh, and and to just calmly, you know, get to the end when you feel I sense that you could feel embarrassed or all sorts of emotions are probably going through your head and to just kind of hold your head up by and say, OK, it didn't work on this this crowd or like you talked about the open mics, right? That's kind of taking your jokes out for a test drive, right? So you go, you go around, you see what you get, you see what, how people react. I give you credit for courage. Uh, Cause I think it takes a ton. It does. It does take, uh, it, it does take a little bit of, a little bit of bravery, a bravery to get up there and do it because there is that feeling that, that nervous feeling just before you're about to go up and you know it triggers your flight or your fight or flight. And you know, there's been plenty of situations where I looked around like, oh, my God, uh, if I just dipped out the back, nobody's going to even know I was even here. So there have been plenty of situations like that. But the one thing, I've never backed down from, from uh, a spot. Never done it. I never will. And you're naturally funny. I mean, I, I remember... I remember that uh, the movie uh, that I they did, I worked on with you. Uh, and you played one of two brothers uh, who... Or, you know, you come to, I mean, the long of the short is you, you come to visit your parents for Thanksgiving, you have a girlfriend with you, but you're engaging in an affair with, uh, with a, a Latina female who you're really, is the person you are like into and in love with, but you have this girlfriend that you uh, leave, uh, you know, you don't want to hurt her feelings or for whatever course of reasons you have, uh, and you don't want to break up with her right before the holiday, you bring her to your family's Thanksgiving. Uh, and ultimately, your your brother, you know, takes a liking to the girl you go with, and and your girlfriend, your your true, you know, the person you're truly into, the Latina girl, shows up at the party, you know, shows up on Thanksgiving, <laughs> <laughs> and it was so funny. I mean, it was the material in it in and of itself. I I thought was good material. But I remember seeing you in it. And the scene you did, I can't remember her name, the actress that was with you. But when she, you know, you're chasing her out because she storms out and she's like throwing stuff at you out of the car. She's like, whatever she's got is heading at your head. And you're ducking down and she's throwing things, trying to catch it. And you're like, wait a minute, like, you know, trying to get away and edgewise. I mean, it was classically funny. I mean, you just did such a good job with the material. And I, I think a lot of times that's why comics make such good actors, right? They deliver the material with the right, you know, facial expression, inflection in their tone that makes that magic happen, that makes that funny happen in front of the camera. That was that was an experience. And uh, Anna, Lu Anna, Anna Luiza Luizzi, I believe yeah. was, was her name. Yeah, yeah, she's I think the ballet. She's a great dancer, and I think she's into doing a lot of uh, formal ballets and stuff now too. Yeah, that was her. So talented, yeah. though. You had great chemistry, and you did a good job. That was that was an experience. I tell you, I, and I think I think we've talked about this a little bit in the past. That was one. That was definitely top top of my most uh, enjoyable experiences. That and the web series that followed. That was, uh, that was an honor to be a part of. And uh, I just actually watched both of those recently, like this week. 
in the lead up to doing this call, to doing this podcast. And because uh, you sent me, you, you sent them to me a while ago. Yeah. And uh, I've, I still go back to them. The link still works. And uh, I, I, I go back to them and I watch them. And it was such a, such a thrill just to be a part of the movie making process. And uh, th the scene that you're talking about, that was a lot of fun to shoot with her because we, um, we practiced that on our own prior to, to getting there. You know, I think we sent you videos of it too. We practiced the car scene. That was one of my favorite ones to do. And um, what do you call it? The, the, the scene where, where the parents walk in and they see the, uh, that um, Amelia had the engagement ring and, yeah. and that whole mess happened. And because that was fun with the facial expressions, because that was what really sold it. And just the whole experience. I mean, it was, it was, it was not work in any way, shape or form. That was just highly enjoyable. And I'm dying for season two of, uh, of hundred <laughs> indecisions, by the way, I'm I, dying for it. I would love to do that to get the funding and plow through with that. That was so mm -hmm much fun and it was it was great i mean seamus he does this he does this great scene with uh, with the, uh, the the actress uh i i mean the the girl that he brings to the his parents house uh he was holding an engagement ring for somebody uh, for his brother actually he was holding this engagement ring and uh she finds it and thinks he's going to propose oh and, my and his mother comes in like, hey, I brought you fresh towels, guys, you know, <laughs> and like, so the mother starts jumping up and down with excitement as the girl is looking at the ring, you know, Rob <laughs> comes into the scene, like, uh, you know, jaw down, because now the mother assumes that he's proposed, she's hugging everybody, the girlfriend's like, <laughs> I don't know what to make of this, and Rob is just absolutely stunned, because he's a pebble throw from breaking up with her, and he's <laughs> never seen his parents so happy, so he's like, okay you know and he's what am i supposed to do i know it's, it's so it, add, it adds to the intrigue when when some people know that some people don't know what's going on it's so adds to the intrigue it's amazing it did and he really did sell it i mean that's what i thought his comedian background well i don't i mean sure a great actor could have done it just as, you know just as well i'm not taking that away but really the fact that oh, of he knew that you know he knew the ins and outs of making people laugh just as just one look on his face, I still remember shooting the scene that I, I had trouble. I had to walk off set because I was laughing so hard. I worked, I know I worked with, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Rob. No, 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 please, 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 please. So I, I, have you ever come across, uh, 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 oh, I've got his name now. Can't remember his name. <laughs> From SA, did the, he did the news on SNL, Colin. Quinn. Colin Quinn, yes, yes, yes. Do, are you, you know Colin? I've met Colin. I've never had yeah. the privilege of working with him, but yeah. I have met him. Uh, and he, he is all over the New York City. You can go, there's, if you go to any club in New York City, there's a distinct possibility Colin Quinn can walk in to, walk, to work on material. I got to work with Colin probably about 20 years ago, and he did, he did a little sh his sh comeback show after SNL. And I was at, at, at uh, the Irish Arts Center. You know the Irish Arts Center in, on, the, on the west side? I'm not and, familiar with it, but. Yeah, it's yeah, on, west, on West 51st. And uh, he, uh, what a great guy. What a great guy. I just uh, had a great experience with him. And, and uh, uh, yeah, anyways, it's just so you might know him. I wish. I wish I could say, like, I know him on the level that if he saw me, he would, oh, hey, Rob, how you doing? That would be, <laughs> that would be cool. I, I know I would know him, but he would probably think I'm just some creep off the street. <laughs> but, um, like I said, I've, I've, I've been in clubs waiting to go up. And then, you know, here, here in, comes, in comes Colin Quinn. Um, even one time I was doing a show downstairs at Gotham Comedy Club in, in um, I, I, uh, what is that, uh, East 21st Street, I think it is. I'm, I'm not sure the exact uh, address off the top of my head, but um, all of a sudden upstairs just starts going nuts out of its mind. You hear the cheering and everything from upstairs. What the hell is going on? I go up real quick and who's up on stage but Jerry Seinfeld. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah. It's a common thing. It, it wow. happens. It happens quite a bit. He'll just walk in and do a set. Dave Chappelle showed up one time at Stand Up New York. And that's up, that's way uptown. And uh, like that's, that's, he was on the show just before the one that I was there to do that night. So it's like I always come, I, I always come so close to these, to these folks. And, um, it's it's that's what's the cool thing about being a comedian is too it's such a small community that when you when you grow and you develop with 
certain people that maybe go on to, to bigger and better things, there's always the possibility you're going to circle back with them at some point. Question I love to ask our guests is, what was the last physical altercation you had? <laughs> the last physical altercation. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm a very peaceful individual. So this is this is I'd be afraid of a of a uh, of a physical altercation. I'm not sure I know how to handle myself. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I look like I could I could throw a little bit, but you know, I, I I don't I don't know. The most I've ever done is hit a punching bag. That's probably the only physical altercation I've ever had is with a heavy bag. Mm. Um, that's good. That I mean, I have I, you know, I have a question that I think. I think I'm going to know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What was your most memorable moment in your career? My most memorable moment. I was, I had the opportunity to open for Artie Lang and I was sick. I was very, very, very sick for like several days leading up to this show. And I kept, I kept saying, like, I started feeling it like on Tuesday. I must have had a flu or something. But uh -huh. the show was that Friday night. And um, it was up at the, it was up at the, the one in Springfield. The, that's where I met you. Oh, the Comedy Central. Oh, no, Comedy. Uh, Cove. Comedy Cove. That's it. Comedy Cove. Yeah, the Comedy that's Cove. A great club. I mean, they have so many, uh, so many comedians in and out and big ones. I mean, you know, big top names. That's a great. Oh yeah, place. it's a great room. It's yeah. it's 120 seats. I haven't. I I actually my um my relationship with them had come to a uh a come to an end, but I I've never harbored any bad feelings. It's it's a great little club. It's a it's a good little restaurant, and there, yeah, you do see a lot of comics cycling in and out of there. Big names. It's it's cool. So in in this particular instance, I was working there, and I had the opportunity to open for Artie Lang, and this was, uh, you know, he was still famous. I mean, he's he's always been famous since the early '90s, but he was he still had his packed crowd, 130 people in the room, all there to see Artie, and I was sick. I was sick all week, and that Friday, that Friday, I stayed home from work. I rested all day. I just needed to save my energy and have uh, something for this for for the show that night. I had to bring my A game because it's Artie Lang. You know, you gotta you you can't you can't you can't go in with you know eighty percent. You got to go in at a hundred. And I pulled it together. I pulled it together. I just. I just got myself, got my energy up and ready to go. And they, you know, my name got called over a loudspeaker and I just, it was all adrenaline from that point that just took me right on stage. And I had up to that point, probably one of the best sets of my career. And it was a good solid 25 minute set right up in the front of the show to a cold crowd. And I had them going from the start. I carried them and I even walked off that stage with swagger. I walked off that stage like, um, like Conor McGregor, just, you know, shoulders up, neck back, just, <laughs> just swinging my head. I was so pompous. I get off that stage and there's Artie Lang in the back. And I was like, yeah, beat that big guy. And <laughs> he did. Let's just say that. He did. He went he up did. there and, you know, basically, basically, I know I got laughs throughout, but you wouldn't have heard my laughs from the street. I stepped out to my car to essentially pass out. And the laughter from the club woke me up. That's how loud of a roar, wow. of a raucous laughter he was drawing. It, the, and yeah, he, uh, I, that, that shot my confidence down. But that's okay. That's okay. I still had a good set. I know I did good. I know I did good. I know I did my thing. I, I, know, I, I know I earned my paycheck that night. <laughs> I have to say, I'm, I'm a, you know, I was a literature student at St. John's University with Tony. And according to Thoreau and Emerson, the number one measure of success in life is to laugh often. That's right. That's right. I love that. Right. That's right. I love that. We both used to love that. Uh, mm. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Thank you. I completely agree. And so you're creating that for people. You're helping people laugh. I mean, so much time. I think so much. So often, people need that laugh. Right. How often do people need? Uh, to just to, to forget about their problems. I mean, it's, it's a true service that you're doing. I love it 
like probably the most gratifying part of being a comedian is when somebody comes up to me after a show and says, that was so much fun. Thank you so much. You have no idea how much I needed that. Um, I've even, I've even had people that I know that were having a tough time just going through tough personal problems. Maybe, you know, maybe they had uh, just lost a family member, uh, a pet or something along those lines. And they just, they just needed, to, they just needed to, to get out and enjoy themselves. And that was a cool thing about working at a comedy club and even running my own uh, comedy club under my own business name. I was able to at least, you know, take, you know, tickets and, and give them some, Hey, listen, I know you're having a tough time. Come out to the show. I'll buy you a drink. And uh, let me, let me show you a good time for the night. And that, that feeling of, of watching them, laugh deeply that facial expression that you almost thought you'd never see again to see it come out it, it really is a special thing it, it is it is well I, I mean I, again I give you credit I think the creating anything is hard but creating comedy is particularly hard uh, and I think it takes courage and a lot of intelligence to do it and do it well Oh, now see now you're just now you're just teasing my ego over here. Now you're, now you're making me feel good. <laughs> no, I have a lot of respect for comedians. I mean, I, I remember being at the club that you're talking about, and um, you you know you always had a great bunch of comedians come in and out of that club, and um, it wasn't easy, right? Because sometimes some people would get up and I guess hadn't really refined their material, and you'd see them crash and burn. And mm -hmm. I remember thinking, you know, that's, that's just not easy. Well, I think I remember the first time I met you was at one of the new talent nights. And uh, I, be I believe you had come down and you had done a little bit of filming that night uh, with Maria. And um, that was that, that was the first time I met you. And it wasn't long after that, that you approached me about doing a Thanksgiving proposal. Um, the uh, Because that, you were so night, funny. You were so funny. It was great. <laughs> I uh, I remember some of those nights. Yeah, you do have comics that are new at it. They've never done it before. Some of them, some of them have have maybe written a couple of jokes, and that was the the extent of their act. You have others that you know ha had tried it a couple times, and maybe they did it ten years ago, and they took a break, and now they're coming back to it. There was all all different levels of of talent. And yeah, sometimes you you find people that struggle. The bottom line is it, it really isn't for everybody. It's, it, it's, it's a very difficult thing to do. And some people, I don't want to say they overthink it because I know I've overthought it plenty over the years, but there are, there are folks out there that just like some of the intangibles of being a comedian, they, they just don't, you know, they, they may, they just may not have it, you know, and there's uh, a lot of that's thinking on your feet. Uh, and, uh, adjusting on the fly, maybe realizing that something may not work here. Do I omit it? Do I try a different approach? There's, there, there's, there's a lot of thinking that goes on. You're watching a comedian and they're delivering their act. And even if you've seen them 15, 20 times, and it looks like it's the same thing you've seen so many times over and over, there's a lot of thinking going on there. You're, 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 you're thinking, okay, is this, is this train, um, is this working? Like, are they, are they responding to these bits? So do I, if they're not, do I just skip over the next one and get to the things that I know that work? Do I get off of the, the potentially risky topics and just stay on the safe stuff? Are they, are they cringing when you curse? So do I just completely stop the cursing? So like, these are all questions that are, that you're asking yourself as you're performing. And, and even and one overlooked thing is even hearing your, your voice through a microphone has a funny way of messing with your head, especially if you're new. You know, you, you take that microphone and you speak into it and you hear it boom through the mm -hmm. room. It can throw you for a loop. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you have to really get used to. And that just comes with experience. Exactly. I was just going to say that. Like, just having the experience is everything. You know, I, as I said, my thing was boxing and, and I just didn't have the experience when I fought these big, big guys. And didn't actually have the trainers either. So, so having a mentor, like you said, is, is so, it's relieving. It's so relieving and, and uh, just to have that confidence. So, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, sorry. I was going to say, as you were speaking, I was thinking it sounds a little bit like trial law, right? I, I have a witness, you know, maybe I'm going to do cross-examination on that witness. So I'm figuring out how to lure them into saying what I want them to say, uh, you know, and your mind's working and you're doing that a lot of times 
you may have had a plan as to what you were going to address with them or how you were going to go through the questioning, but suddenly opportunity presents itself and you really have to roll with it. You know, that's like reading the room. You have to read the witness and figure out how to get them to say what you want them to say. And it sounds a little bit like that different, different venue completely, but a similar thing. Right. And there's probably more riding on the cross-examination than there <laughs> is on a common show. <laughs> you know, you have, you have somebody's I'll legal feet. Maybe you have somebody's, uh, Maybe you have a, a civil liability issue, and that's all a lot more significant than 15 minutes on stage making somebody laugh. Mm. But uh, you know, it's I'll give you uh, that. yeah. But but it is it it definitely is a very similar. You tap into the same parts of your brain while you're while you're up there working, and and that's why I want to. I'm, I'm asked often, what's the biggest skill set that you can have uh, to be a successful comedian? And it's be, it really is being able to think on your feet and and mm. adapt on the fly, change things up. And, mm -hmm. and recognize your situation where you're at and, and tailor what you're doing to cater, that crowd, cater to that crowd on the fly. And it's mm -hmm. not an easy thing to do. Okay, so just two more things I want to cover before we let you go. Uh, sure. The acting, I'm curious as to whether or not you enjoy the acting as much as you do the, you know, the, co the comedy love it stand-up comedy love it i absolutely love it i i loved acting and you, and working with you was the first uh instance i ever had of acting and i loved every second of it uh, and not just not just enjoying enjoying working with you tony but doing the actual acting because that's another thing that i i, I had always wanted to do up to that point and it like i said it was one of the it's one of the top times of my life and i've done a little bit of acting since but i wish i had done more to pursue some more um but i've i've been very patiently waiting for the next season and uh for any project that we could do because <laughs> i i want to get back to it i like you know memorizing the lines practicing rehearsing and you know, practicing your timing and and realizing maybe I was just you know overacting that role. Maybe I'm I'm overselling it. I'm not selling it enough. I've really got to be more convincing. Or filming myself rehearsing something and looking back at it like you know, no, what are you doing? Stop. All right, regroup. Whole different train of thought here. You know, it, it's it, that to me is that I I love it. I love acting, and I I I I want to do more acting. So. I want to do acting as much as I want to do comedy, and I could I could do both day in and day out. Yeah, well, Seamus, that that speaks to you, Seamus, too, right? You're equally drawn to the boxing. To yeah. To yeah, totally. I guess it wasn't even being on stage because when uh, uh, in plays, I'm not. I don't like them as much. Or on film, you know, you can you just re you know curse and do it again, and uh, the fee it's all about the feeling, you know. I mean, what's uh, personally, I have this uh, thing in life is like, I want to feel good. That's it. That's the bo bottom line of everything. And then I can be kinder. I can help people, listen to people, uh, be in the world and, uh, and, res and uh, relate to people. And that's, that's what I, I, lo I look to get in my life. It's a feel good first. Absolutely. Sure. And the acting and definitely does that. Cause, and then even, even working with Tony, I got to... You know, I got to I got to tap into all of that, and you know, we we did we did the movie, and the movie was was a, a romantic comedy, and then the spinoff web series, which was a little which was more dramatic. Okay. It we we got to do it all. You know, there was there was funny lines in the drama, and um, there were some dramatic lines in the comedy. So I mean, we 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 got to we we got to do it all, and you gave me the opportunity to 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 oh, that's uh, take some risks. You know, Seamus' question earlier, when's the last time you got into a physical altercation? The movie. He has a he has yeah. a fight scene with his brother. <laughs> yes, yes. We had we had we did have a, a very loud verbal altercation which got physical. And uh yeah, me and Anthony. That's uh Anthony Crescenzo. He's he's a great guy, he's one of my best friends. We've we came up as comedians. We he's been doing it for 15, 16 years also. And he's like, you know, we, we, we talk to each other all the time and he, and we still call each other brother, you know, and, and even my mother, she, you know, she, Hey, is your, is your brother coming up? And, I, and at first I think that she's talking about my, my blood brothers and no, no, she's not talking about them. She's talking about Anthony. Is Anthony coming up? Are we going to get to see Anthony at some point? And it's, uh, it's great. I, it's, when you, when you have him on, that's going to be a great show. He's, he's a terrific guy. 
Yeah, he's coming within the next week or two, I think. He's going to be on. So I'm looking forward to seeing him as well. Uh, you guys yeah, are great, great, great together. But that's your answer, Seamus. That's the last time we had a fight with somebody on camera. Yeah. <laughs> I could smell it. I could smell it. You smell the fight, right? You smell the aggression. You know what? Very attuned to conflict. <laughs> he's, you know what? He can be, Rob can be really intense. Um, and I mean that in a good way. Like when he was acting and he had to do these dramatic scenes where he was angry, Rob got really intense for the scene. Uh, and I thought he did the, the the fighting. I mean, with that, he really brought it on that you were a little afraid of Rob. <laughs> you know, I was with Anthony's a very kind of a gentle soul, uh, very mild mannered. Uh, and I thought like in the, you know, in the, the whole thing, I mean, you thought Rob's going to beat the crap out of poor Anthony. <laughs> Uh, because Rob really came, you know, with a lot of uh, with a lot of aggression, and that's what you're sensing. But in reality, mm -hmm. Rob is very uh, is very calm too. I'm, I'm, very, I'm a gentle soul. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm a gentle soul. So that was that was definite acting. That was uh, you know that was that was not even the whole role. Like the, you know the, the 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 entire character that I played is so the polar opposite of who I am as a as a human being that mm. I, I really had to go to a different place to make that work and you know once again that was challenging it was exciting it was fun it was funny and then even times I I had to tap into some real raw emotion and mm. it, it it was it was just amazing the whole experience was amazing and I'm serious I'm ready to do season two whenever you are. <laughs> I'm ready. I'd love to write season two because I felt like we ended season one in a cliffhanger and like mm -hmm. they're just out there now. Like <laughs> I just left these poor <laughs> characters out there. So I would love to write season two. It's all about getting the funding. That's how I'd like a part also. <laughs> oh, Seamus, I would love to do because I worked with Seamus too in um in in Surviving Sam. Uh and okay. Seamus did such a good job. He played the best friend. And he was he was very sarcastic. He was the um nah, I wasn't. Nah. You, no, you were the instigator <laughs> in the group. You were totally in that in that particular role, Seamus's job was to instigate trouble. Uh and he really <laughs> did it well. Uh, I mean, very true to form, right, Seamus? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I would Just love to work with you, Seamus. That'd be great. <laughs> Ditto, ditto. So my last question is, you said you got into some producing comedy shows. Tell us. Yes. So about, uh, I want to say even as long as 13 years ago, not long into my performing, I, I got to, I got to um, co-produce some shows where, um, where an organizer would um, team up with a restaurant or um, a nonprofit organization and they would do a fundraiser event and I would come in and I would not only perform on the show, but I would also bring sound equipment. I would bring, eventually I would get spotlighting and I would bring spotlights. And I got, I, I've come to realize that on top of performing, I also had a real knack for putting a show together. So I founded a company called The Comedy Haven which is uh, something I'm very, very proud of. It's been, it's been in business for many years now and we, we have shows in the books and I love, doing, uh, I love doing fundraiser events for nonprofit organizations. I do still work for restaurants. I, I, do, I do enjoy working for them. The, uh, the real bread and butter though is, is helping out uh, a good cause. And I've had a lot of opportunity to make, uh, to help raise lots of money for veterans, particularly my father was a veteran. So I have a, a, a real, a real, big spot in my heart for anybody who served for this country and um great I've, I've i've had i've had tremendous experience getting out there and producing shows and i've i've done i've done shows for all kinds of all kinds of organizations fire departments uh ems squads uh rotary clubs uh knights of columbus's american legions vfws i've done some corporate gigs i did a, i did a show for a met life office and I even just recently out in Pennsylvania did a show for a, uh, a nudist resort. So <laughs> no, no shortage of, of interesting situations. Did you so, have to uh, be nude? I mean, did you have to no, be nude? No, 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 no. And you couldn't have paid me enough to be nude. I wouldn't have done that. I give them so much credit for, for going out. I and mean, that's how, and, and the whole thing is those folks don't want to be judged. And that's it. I would never judge what they would do, but I'm good with my clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> and i brought in i brought in some talented acts and we you know we tease them a little bit but you know that's always the 800 pound elephant uh 800 pound gorilla in the room and uh you know we address it 
and we play around to it. And that's, uh, that's, that's just how that goes. And there's no, there's, there's nobody I wouldn't do a show for, you know, there's, there's no organization, there's no group, political affiliations aside, anything like that. I'll, I'll do, I'll produce a show for any cause for any community that there is. If they, if they need help, they want entertainment, they need to raise money for their cause. I am ready, willing, and able and delighted to do it. I mean, I don't know if I would do one for like, you know, the Taliban, that, that might be a tough one. But, uh, you know, <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll do a show for I'll do a show for just about anybody. That's wonderful. Where can people go to find out about, you know, what, what you have coming up, either where you're going to appear next or uh, your, these shows or get information about hiring you to produce some of their comedy shows? So the first place you can start is my website, which is thecomedyhaven.com. And it's just d- those three words all in one, uh, thecomedyhaven.com. You can follow me on Instagram, on Facebook at the Comedy Haven. Uh, you can certainly find me there doing that, and um, you'll you'll be able to see upcoming shows. You'll be able to see um, testimonials from uh, past organizations that I've worked with, and um, get to see get to get a baseline idea of what gets involved in producing a show as a fundraiser event. And uh, I'll certainly discuss costs. I mean different variables uh, come into play when pricing a show out. But the bottom line is I price my shows out so that they are profitable for the organization. I'm not looking to make a million dollars on the show. I want to help them. I want to help them with their cause. And you know, that's how I'm going to, that's how I'm going to develop that relationship and let it go for many, many years is that I, I help them. If I don't help them or if I, if I'm too, if I'm cost ineffective, it's not going to work. They're not going to want to work with me. And I, I don't want that. I would, I would rather, I would rather let them take the lion's share of the money. And I can't say the same for people that do what I do and compete against me. Well, we're going to put the links down below for the YouTube video. So you will be able to see them um, and click on them easily. Uh, Rob has a show to get to, so we're going to have to let him go. Um, but I want to say thank you so much, Rob, for being here. Um, I, Again, I love what you do. I think you're very funny. And um, I was thrilled to get a few minutes at least with you now to do this. I appreciate you coming on the show. Seamus and I appreciate it. Likewise, oh, Rob. Shame. Great to great to meet you, and, and uh, vir- even though virtually, but thank you. Tony, Seamus, thank you so much for having me on the show. It was a delight to be a part of it. And I, I was so excited leading up to it. So this was really great. And I, you know, I hope I can come back soon. And I really hope, Seamus, I hope to meet you in person. Tony, I hope to see you very soon and give you a big hug, it would it would be wonderful. Agreed. So for everybody, uh, it may interest you to know, we're going to say, see ya.